Hello, everyone. This is Attack the Backlog, the podcast where I, Mark Kuznez, tries to make a dent in their backlog one game at a time. This episode is all about Anthem. Not the banger of a song by Good Charlotte, but the banger of a game by Bioware, the beloved studio known for KOTOR, Mass Effect, and Dragon Age, delivering some of the best stories in gaming. Anthem takes what Bioware is known for and throws it all out the window, providing us with a third-person action game where you can fly like Iron Man and... You can fly like Iron Man. Anthem originally came out on February 22nd, 2019 for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. And if it's not already apparent, both the Anthem by Good Charlotte and Anthem by Bioware are anything but bangers, if my old enough ass is even using that kid lingo correctly. Also, apparently Bangers and Mash is a British dish consisting of sausages and mashed potatoes, so Bangers also means sausage in some parts of the world and has mixed sausage themselves. I now feel like my own personal banger. Plus, I have been known to mash, the monster mash if you want to get specific. Anyway, so... Anthem is a game many likely know because of the controversy surrounding its release. Controversy in the sense that it basically crashed and burned on impact. The game launched with frame rate issues, bugs, and terrible load times, all of which to varying degrees are still present in its current state, and that's only part of the game's problems. But EA and Bioware have promised a rework, a version 2.0 that will supposedly fix a lot of the problems and complaints players have with the game, and with that knowledge, you might be wondering why I decided to play Anthem now instead of waiting for when it's fixed. The reason is simple. I want to experience the game as it is prior to the relaunch so I can compare and contrast the two versions when version 2.0 comes out, if it ever does. I'm not saying it won't come out, but I think there is at least a very minute chance that it never sees the light of day, which I say because I don't see how anything could breathe life into this very non-Bioware Bioware game. Now that I've gotten all that set up out of the way, let's talk about Anthem. I hate Anthem. Was I expecting to hate Anthem? No. Did I go into the game with optimism and hope? You bet your ass I did. So why did I end up hating the game? It's simple. Anthem just isn't a good game. There are good ideas and some great mechanics within it, but the majority of what's there is either uninteresting, boring, or broken in one way or another. The biggest and most shocking thing about Anthem is that the story is so throwaway and delivered so poorly that I stopped caring about it and stopped paying attention after the first hour. I ended up skipping what few cutscenes were there and skipped every bit of dialogue, eventually avoiding conversations altogether when I just wanted the game to end. This is shocking because Bioware is, above all else, a studio known for delivering some of the best stories in all of gaming. Stories that make you feel like you yourself are a part of them with meaningful choices to make and deep relationships to build, but none of that is an anthem. The majority of the story is delivered via talking heads that stare straight into your cold dead eyes and that got old real fast. Why make me choose my face when there's literally never a single moment when you see it outside of the initial character creation screen? You don't see your face during conversations, during cutscenes, or even when you're in the social lounge interacting with other players. It was literally a waste of time picking what I look like. Not that you're given a lot of options anyway, but the strong lack of any kind of personal identity didn't matter because the world and the characters who inhabit it as a whole lack any kind of strong personality, making it hard to get invested in any of it. Not to mention the terrible casting where familiar voices like Kenneth from 30 Rock and Mel from Flight of the Concords play characters who don't suit their voices at all. All. Long story short, the story failed to grab me and, as I'll get to shortly, when I realized I didn't care for the actual playing of most of the game, all I wanted to do was get through the game as fast as I could, so the story became nothing more than a speed bump in my goal to finish the game as quickly as possible. Now, as much as Bioware is known for their storytelling, I've still enjoyed playing their games to varying degrees, with Mass Effect being their best from a gameplay standpoint, so I would have been fine accepting a different type of Bioware game that focused on gameplay over story. There's no reason why a studio can't try something different, right? But Anthem just isn't any fun, and what makes it even worse is that there are multiple similar games that beat Anthem in at least one way, leading one to think, why am I playing Anthem instead of this game or that game, if your answer is, as one of my friends would say, but the flying feels so good. That isn't enough. While I agree that flying feels great and the initial launch from ground to flight is 
always satisfying, that one mechanic can't save an otherwise boring game. The problem is, what you're doing in game becomes repetitive way too quickly as you fight these same enemies over and over and over again, which would be fine if the enemies were interesting, but they're not. Shooting is solid, but the solid things you're shooting are dumb and come at you in large numbers instead of in creative and interesting ways. Your basic enemy will just run around like an idiot, shooting at you periodically and requires absolutely no thought. Then there's an enemy who drops homing mines, but they have no defense and are thus easy to take out in seconds. After that, we have the more powerful flying enemies with shields who, honestly, are just stronger versions of the basic enemies and big boys in the form of titans and other such giants who don't fight in interesting ways but simply have a larger health bar and do more damage if they hit you. There are other enemies as well that fall somewhere in between the ones mentioned and a handful of animals as well, but none require any strategy outside of shooting them a whole bunch until they're dead. The only enemy that does require a little extra work is the big dude holding a shield who requires you to get behind them in order to do serious damage, which can be a pain when fighting on your own, but for the most part, enemy encounters are more tedious than fun, and that's not the way it should be in a game where combat is such a huge part of the experience, and to make matters worse, the spoils of war are absolute trash. I admittedly haven't paid much attention to the updates about version 2.0, but I do know they've commented on rehauling the loot system and boy oh boy does it need it. The loot in Anthem is trash. Trash because all it is is different weapons that are basically just the same weapon you have, but maybe, and I have to stress, maybe just a little bit better than the version you're currently using. You won't find unique weapons and even worse, you will never ever find a single piece of armor because Anthem has very little armor to begin with and what armor is there costs in-game currency, currency you can earn slowly, or a different currency you can pay real money for. Fuck that. To have so few options when it comes to creating the look of your javelin is crazy, but it's even crazier to put almost all of it behind a paywall, even if you can pay for it with currency you earn in-game. It all leads to the real question of Anthem. Why the fuck are you even playing it? And why does it feel like a wannabe games as a service game, I'm asking myself. It's definitely not for the story, which lacks any sense of immersion. It's not the gameplay because while it does feel good from a control standpoint, it is ultimately boring and, like I said earlier, the spoils of war are so worthless that you have no real incentive to actually partake in said combat. So again, I must ask the question, why the fuck are you even playing it? For me, the answer is simple. I decided to play it for this show. If not for Attack the Backlog, I would have quit Anthem way before reaching the end, but I was committed to finishing the game and finish the game I did. Now, before I wrap this episode up, let's go over some of the bug slash performance issues with the game, at least those which I personally experienced. The most egregious problem are the load times. Loading is frequent and, far too often, incredibly long. If you're playing this on a console, you should expect regular load times of around one minute. In a game where you're going between areas on a somewhat regular basis, long load times add up fast and frustrate even faster. What's even worse, there are times where you have to go into a cave for a few minutes, if even that, and even this will initiate a short load time. I know it's usually because it's a much bigger space you'll be returning to later, but when that's the case, don't make me go there for some stupid story beat that lasts a minute and seems relatively pointless. On top of the atrocious load times, the game still lacks a smooth frame rate and can get choppy when a lot of shit is happening on screen. For the most part, the game ran smooth enough on my Xbox One X, but there were still a handful of times when shit was so crazy that the frame rate noticeably dropped and, while it didn't pose too much of a problem, it was still disappointing to see such a dip every now and again. Then there are the bugs. Most of the time, Enemies have life bars above them showing how much health they have left and also how much damage you're doing when making contact. The key words there are most of the time. More frequently than expected, a random enemy or two just would not have a life bar, so I wouldn't know how close they were or weren't to dying. Not a huge problem, but annoying. Another bug, I assume this is a bug, is that sometimes, again, more frequent than expected, enemies upon dying would remain in a standing position, sometimes they'd rotate ever so slightly, before disappearing after a few seconds of what the fuck is going on. Again, not a huge problem, but annoying, though 
extra annoying when you compound it with the potentiality of a missing health bar leading you to wonder if you've actually killed them or not. I've had to back out from the launch mission screen because it wouldn't let me select a mission. I've seen characters' facial hair appear out of nowhere mid cutscene and far too many times with the map of Fort Tarsus either opened up nowhere near anything was forcing me to scroll to my position or in some cases just wouldn't let me scroll at all. These are just a handful of little issues that help make Anthem such an unpleasant experience. Are there good ideas here and is the flying fun? Yes, but you can find much of what you'd probably want from Anthem in other games like Destiny to Monster Hunter to Warframe. I can't begin to tell you how many times I thought to myself while playing Boy, oh boy, I would rather be playing any of those aforementioned games, and I'm not even the biggest Destiny fan. Also, Warframe is free and feels way better as a third-person shooter. I know a huge update is in the works, and I do hope Bioware can turn things around and get people excited about Anthem again, but as someone who loves Bioware and wanted to just like Anthem, I can't see any way to write this ship. When I look at Anthem, I can think of only two options, either scrap the game as a failed experiment or make an entirely new game because in order to make Anthem something worth playing and something worth recommending, it would have to be a new game anyway. And before I go, while I did play most of the game solo, I also played a fair amount of the game with one of my best friends and if you're thinking, well, it might suck solo, but I'm sure it's still fun playing with a friend, I'm here to tell you it isn't. Playing with a friend didn't magically make the experience better, it just gave me someone to pitch to as I played it. Anyway, it's a new day, but it all feels old. It's a good life, that's what I'm told, but everything, it all just feels the same, and my high school, it felt more to me like a jail cell, a penitentiary. My time spent there, it only made me see that I don't ever want to be like you. I don't want to do the things you do. I'm never going to hear the words you say because I don't ever want to. I don't ever want to be. You don't want me to be just like you. What I'm saying is, this is the anthem. Throw all your hands up. You. Anyway, for real this time, once again, I am Mark Krishnez. Y'all can find me on Twitter and pretty much everywhere at PX Sausage. The site is, of course, pixelatedsausage.com, where you can find this podcast, the Pixelated Sausage podcast, and Unamazingly Baka, all of which are available on podcast services across the globe. You can also check out the art I make on the site, and if you see something you like, you can purchase a print of the piece you fancy. And if you fancy the site in general and anything that we do, please go over to patreon.com slash pxs and support us that way as always thank you for watching or listening i hope you enjoyed this here episode and i hope you have a wonderful wonderful rest of your day